you are risking their lives and my grandson's for the gun people? Are you kidding me? We've had a shooting in Des Moines. And here's one more thing. You and Senator Ernst, hearts and prayers, whatever. Why are you not down at those funerals in Texas? You seem to think it's okay to arm the whole country with 400 million guns, more than people in our country. So why are you down there mourning with those parents? The immunity won first. I don't, I don't know about all of you, but it's a sad commentary when we have somebody that can kill all the kids that are killed. Do you think that the safest place to go would be send your kids to school and be the safest place? And, uh, and uh, we all... Speak up. We all uh, feel very sad about all that stuff as well. And uh, when it comes to the issue of guns, as a result of what has happened after several shootings, uh, in this one particularly, uh, Senator Schumer has assigned Senator Murphy, and Senator McConnell has assigned Senator uh, Cornyn of Texas to uh, see what could be put together. Yesterday they had a meeting by Zoom and they had very positive results that they think they've got a framework put together that something can be done to stop this violence through some gun legislation and through some uh, school safety issues. And so to answer your question, I'm gonna wait until they report next week before I decide what I'm going to do. We just watched Republican Senator Chuck Grassley's constituents rip him a new asshole because he is refusing to do, well, anything with regard to gun control. And that was so, so satisfying to see. My favorite part was when he was speaking really quietly and somebody else speak up. And then he did. That gives me hope because these constituents and I think a lot of Americans across the country are beginning to realize that you are the boss of these politicians it's not the other way around you pay their bills for them your tax dollars fund their salaries you are in control of them and if they don't do a good job you can reprimand them you can even fire them so i'm glad that people across this country are finding their voices and it happens because everyone is just fed up there's so many crises in this country, and when you see gun violence upon gun violence, just yesterday, there were three shootings happening simultaneously. One of them was a mass shooting at a hospital in Tulsa. So you see this happen time and again, and then these politicians, they show up to these town halls with the same talking points from their donors, and you could just see that the constituents have had enough. Now, this usually doesn't happen at these town halls with Chuck Grassley. If it did, I'd argue he probably wouldn't show up to them as frequently, but these more smaller, intimate town halls usually don't go that way. So I'd argue that he was probably caught off guard. As Iowa Starting Line reports, about 20 people were in the audience at his Louisa County Forum. Smaller crowds typically result in more subdued discussion at Grassley events, but that was not the case here. Multiple attendees pushed back, interrupted, and called out Grassley's role in blocking gun safety legislation from coming to the Senate floor. Several audience members pressed Grassley multiple times over what new gun safety measures he'd be open to supporting, but Grassley repeatedly avoided committing to supporting or opposing any particular idea. He insisted he wanted to wait to see what the legislative negotiations between Republican Senator John Cornyn of Texas and Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut had produced a oh, bullshit. Grassley believed that withholding public judgment on any potential fix would help the negotiations advance 
What a load of horseshit. He defended his past vote to provide legal immunity to gun manufacturers, saying, I voted for it because I believe an honest business ought to not be sued for something that somebody else does. Attendees pointed out that almost no other companies are given similar protections. One man suggested banning the sale of AR-15s, which he described as they're there to kill people. Grassley noted that there's already 15 million AR-15s out in the country. The number may be closer to 20 million. You're still going to have AR-15s even if you stop selling them right now, Grassley said. The answer is not to do nothing, one woman in the back of the room yelled in response. You absolutely love to see it. And I've got one more clip for you, but I just want to discuss overall how, you know, they'll they'll ask him a question, he'll come up with some bullshit excuse, and then they will slap it down. Okay, so you can't take AR-15s out of circulation because there's too many, so then you do nothing. And understand, they're yelling this across the room at him. And he's sitting there very quietly, just taking it like the little cuck that he is, because deep down he knows his constituents are pissed and the Republican Party's refusal to do absolutely anything, it's reached a breaking point. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they will take action, but it has pissed a lot of people off, and rightfully so. I mean, in the first clip there that we watched, the woman said, you're putting my granddaughter or my grandchildren at risk here. You know, if you have a, a family member who's a teacher, you're putting them at risk. So enough is enough. We're tired of the excuses. If you're not going to do anything, then just admit it. Stop with the bullshit excuses that you get probably directly from the gun industry. Now, um, one more clip that I want to play for you is really important because they talk about the need to ban AR-15s and they explain how it's important now because of the rise in violence that we're seeing from Republicans because Republicans, quite frankly, are fucking crazy. And an example that was given by one of Grassley's constituents was how they stormed the Capitol. So take a look at the way that they press him. And this was really, really just great to watch. I'm going to look directly at you and be kind of harsh. You guys need to get it together. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't get it together, there's some people out amongst us that are going to become more violent. Yep. yep. And we are yep. this close. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the Capitol. One more, one more yep. election like we just had. Yep. And the sh shenanigans that have gone on for two years with people. Well, I'm not sure whether it was a fair election or not a fair election. Or I don't know if the votes count or didn't count. That stuff's got to stop. Yep. Yeah, I work the polls, and I hear people come in there to vote and oh, say, can I take is vote? that machine going to take my vote? <laughs> Skeptics. It, just look, can, can I take off where you said find the center? Because that's what's absolutely necessary in the United States Senate when you got 50 Republicans, 50 Democrats, and it takes 60 votes to move a bill. No, it doesn't. See, you see, make it do that. Then, well, that's what the rules of the Senate are. Who cares about the rules? It's not the Constitution. But but now you've hamstrung yourself with the rules. Well, right. But uh, you're letting the attorneys run the show. Right. Every single concern that they brought up was absolutely valid. This is Chuck Grassley's party. So as somebody who's been in Congress, in the Senate for a very long time, he can try to steer the ship in a different direction, but he's not doing that. And they're mad at him. And my favorite, favorite part, uh, it takes 60 votes to move a bill. This is what he said to his constituents, but they were not having it. So uh, they said, no, it doesn't. You make it do that. You make it do that. And I wish that somebody would show up to a Democratic Party uh, member's town hall and say the same thing. Because Democrats say the same thing, to be fair. But this is something that they have chosen to allow. They like to use the 60 vote majority vote as a, th as a sort of excuse. Oh, that's the threshold that we can't meet. Except it's bullshit. You choose to have that rule. And as one of his constituents pointed out, that rule isn't in the Constitution. So either you're going to take action or protect us, or you're going to continue to come up with these bullshit excuses, and you'll understand how increasingly we're getting fed up. So that town hall right there honestly gave me so much hope because citizens across this country are finally finding their voice. Workers across this country are rising up and demanding rights. They're unionizing. And we're seeing more and more at these town halls that they're not taking it anymore they're done with these bogus excuses they're done with the same talking points we've been we've been hearing for literally decades now they're done they're fed up and now they're screaming at their senators if you don't like being screamed at you know chuck grassley ted cruz anyone else well you can thank yourself because you are the reason why it's gotten to this point you have refused to take action and now people are so pissed 
that they feel as if they have to berate you to your face in order to get you to wake the fuck up. But the problem is you can't get them to change their point of view with words because these are politicians who are bought and paid for by specific industries. They don't represent those constituents right there. They represent their donors. And that's what Americans are also waking up to. But it's just really nice to see them slap down any talking point that's brought up. I love it. Nobody's buying the bullshit anymore. And we're fucking pissed. Good. I want to see more of this. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Come.